Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial where I'll be painting cherries and pastels. It's a full real-time tutorial so that you can see step-by-step step exactly what I'm doing. And I'll be drawing this out freehand, but if you want the reference photo and the line art, visit my website and I'll have these available there. I will put the link in the description below. And if you stick around until the end, I will have a pro tip for setting up this still life. So without further ado, let's begin. So I pre-selected my colors before so I could gauge exactly what I would need. I might add more colors as I go because I never like to completely commit to colors in the beginning because often things change as you go along. But here's a little rough thumbnail I did to choose my colors. So I just sampled a bunch of colors and just tried to determine which I would need. So I've put those aside. I often like to do this before I start a piece just so that I know what colors I need to pull out beforehand. So now I'm just going to draw my cherries freehand, just do a little rough sketch. And just let me set this up here. So I'm just taking a pencil and I'm just going to very lightly pencil one cherry here. There will be two cherries. And this will be all covered up in pastels, so I'm not too worried about little lines going over. Okay, there. I think I'll make this one just a little bit bigger here. Just to pull it up a little bit more into the foreground. Okay, we'll have a little indentation here. And one stem is going to come up out of here. And it curves about up to here. So this is going to be a fun little still life. It's just a nice quick little pastel. I like doing these smaller pieces once in a while just to have fun and to practice things. You could do them really quickly without having to get into this really intensive painting. And here's the other stem. And there's another little piece coming up like this. I'm not worried about making these perfect right now because I'll just um. I'll adjust that once I dig into the painting with the colors. Okay, so now what I want to do is take my black pencil and I'm just going to pencil in some darker values at first where the darker shadowed areas will be. And there will be a darker value here that'll get adjusted later. I'm just starting to lightly block in so I just want to make some marks just starting to have an idea of where I need to go and I'll take this red here this is a Karen dash and it's number 585 And the thing is with something like this, I don't have the exact reds. I've got several reds in pencils as well as in soft pastels. And I don't have the exact reds that the cherries appear to be in my reference photo, but that's okay. What I'll do is I'll mix colors. I often need to mix colors when I'm working just to get the tone or the colors as close as possible to what I'm trying to paint. I'm going to take my black here and just make my marks. I know it's going to be darker here, so I'll just pencil this in right away. It'll be a little bit darker here too. And 
and I'll do these completely in pastel pencils. I often like to work with both pastel pencils as well as soft pastels. So at this point, there's nothing fancy. I just want to block in everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in some color and just fill everything in. And I'm not pushing down too hard on my pencil either. I just want to put down color and then I'll push this into the pastel mat. I am working on a piece of six by six pastel mat that I cut myself. So I'm just getting a nice thin layer here. I try to never start off with a thick layer because then it's hard to um, apply subsequent layers over top of that after. So I always want to start off with a very thin layer and then I just build up as I go. Now I will take, I'm going to lay down some purple here and this will all come together after a while. It's all going to blend together nicely. All right, so we had a little accident here and I had to go and sharpen my pencil. Everything should be good now, I hope. That's an issue I have with these pencils. They tend to break a lot, especially when I sharpen them. They're great pencils, but they're very fragile. So I'll add some more purple here. I'm going to come in now with my black again and I'm just going to fill it in Fill in the black in this section here. Just start building up the reflection, the darker reflections and shadowed areas. And when I work, everything tends to always be really ugly in the beginning. And I don't worry about that. I'm just laying down shape and color and I'm going to keep building until I have what I want. And it's all a process of layering. I know you're probably thinking right now this black is kind of scary looking and I get it but this will all blend in with the reds after. It's just part of the process to try and get the really nice dark cherry red and getting those darker reflections in there. And now I have darker reflections here from this cherry too. And I will push this in, blend it together. Now I'm going to take a different red. This is number 080. And if you see my fingers here, I've got a baby wipe and I'm going to wipe the pastel off my fingers just to always keep my fingers clean or as clean as possible while I work. I always keep baby wipes in the studio. They're very handy to keep. Now I'm adding this different red, number 080 and it's a brighter red. I 
It's a lot brighter than what I want my final cherries to be, but that's okay because like I said, I'll just be building up layers and blending everything in together to get what I want. So it's all a process of layering. I will add a bit of navy blue on the bottom here. This is number 149 in the Caran d'Ache. If you don't have Caran d'Ache, just use the colors that you have. Use whatever navy blue you would have on hand in your own set. Just try and get the colors to match as closely as possible. They don't have to be exact. And I'll add some of this navy into the black here. And I'll blend this all in together again. I'm even going to pull in some of the black into the lighter red. This is giving me a deeper red as I blend it in there. And I'll come back with the 585 again. I'll just keep layering this. And I sharpen my pencil again. So it's kind of like a muddy looking red right now, but I'm not too worried about it at this point. I'm just going to keep layering. It's this layering process that gives us depth and realism. And we just keep building up our layers until we have exactly what we want. A lot of beginning artists tend to give up too quick. They'll just um, put in a little bit of color, a couple of layers, and then they'll give up. And they think that's all that they can do. So they get frustrated because their work doesn't look realistic when they should be continuing and just adding more layers, keep building up the layers until they have more of a sense of realism in their piece. Okay, now I'm going to take another red. This one here is a Conte pencil, Conte a Paris. It's um, number 1355 or 039. I'll have to look into that, but I will have the colors listed. So now I'm going to layer this nice red also.
It's a really nice, rich red. I haven't touched my background yet. I'm going to want a white background as well as the white tabletop. So I'm going to wait for that. Otherwise, it'll just smudge. So there's really no point in adding it in right now. I'll build up a bit more of the red here, brighter red. The Conte is a drier pencil. Uh, I find it layers really nicely over other colors, especially softer colors, which might be difficult to layer on top of. The Conte is great to layer. I blow everything off. I really shouldn't blow off the pastel like that. You know, technically, you should pick up your piece and just go tap it in a waistband or something, but I'm recording, so I don't really have the time to start taking everything down, and so I do just blow on my paintings all the time. You just don't want to breathe in that pastel dust, that's all. I'm going to take this blue now, it's number 145. I'm just going to start adding some in. And I'll extend some of this blue down here. Maybe mix a little bit of purple in there. And go back to the red. This is the Conte red. So this is all being mixed together right now. And I want to define a little reflection here on the top of the cherry. I'm going to add it in now, just so I know where I'm going. And I just softly blend it in. I am using very light pressure for this. I'm not pushing down hard at all. I'll extend some of this color down here just to lighten it up a little bit more. And again, just gently blend this in. I'm going to do the same thing here. Just mark down my lighter reflection. Extend it down just a little bit. I'm going to darken it up just a little bit here. It is darker. Let's see. I'm going to use going to use number 089 here just to see how much darker it's going to make this. Okay, this is nice and dark. 
I will use just a little bit of black anyways. And this is a really tiny spot, so I'm going to just take a blending stump. It's a lot easier to go in with a blending stump than my finger. And just add a little bit more red. I'm just going to go around the edges because it is darker. So by going darker around the edges, it's helping to give me more shape and um, more, um, more definition to my cherries. It's giving me my different values from my darker to my mid-tones to my lights. We will add in the lightest lights just at the end, however. But you see how it's already helping to give me more definition? It doesn't just look like a flat red ball. It's having more of a curvature because I'm having dark color here going to lighter color. I'll make it just a little bit darker with the black just so you can see the difference. And then I'll go over it with the red again. But it's just to help show you how by adding some darker colors in some areas, you could change the shape of an object. Take my blending stump. Here, I actually don't even need to go over this with the red, I think. Let me see. Yeah, I like it like this. I think I will take, no, that's a little too light. I'll lighten it up here. And now I'll take a little bit of pink. It's number 099. I'll just add a pink. I just want to lighten it up a little bit here so that when I put in the darker colors, I'll have more contrast. And this contrast is going to give me more realism. It'll help with my range of values to help with the darker darks going down to the lighter lights. So this just lighten it up just a bit here. I just gently blend that in with my finger. And I'll add a bit of lighter color here too. And maybe some lighter color here. I'm seeing a lighter reflection on my reference photo just about here. And here also, I'm having some lighter reflections in this section. I'll add a bit of lighter color down here and pull this down too. Now I want to adjust my dark, so I'll come in with my black again and just darken some of the color. 
just adjust some of those values. I want to have a rounded shape here because the cherry is reflecting on this cherry. So I could see the round part or the round top of the cherry. Now, right next to this lighter blue here, I want to have a darker value. So first I'll come in with the black. I'll have somewhat harder lines here to give me nice contrast. I will go over this with some red, however, just because I don't want it to look black. I'll just gently blend this in. And I'll just lightly go over this with some red. This is the number 089. And I'll use the cone tape pencil again just to brighten up the red a bit. So that's brightening it up nicely here. And I want to darken it up just a little bit around here. Actually, I'll take the black. I'll just adjust my values again, the darker, darker reflections, just a little bit. So there's a really nice bright red here. I'm going to see if this one here will give me that tone. I might have to mix this with a bit of black.
I'll take my blending stump and blend this all together. Okay, I'm going to take out my number 070, which is more of like a vermilion red or a cadmium red. It's just a little tricky to get that exact color here. So I have to try and get creative. There's a reflection on this side of the cherry that is darker and that's what I want to recreate. So I'm just mixing those colors. I'll lighten it up a bit here with the pink on this side and I will have a final highlight here after. Okay, so adding the lighter color gave me more contrast between the two values. So even though it's not exactly the color that I see in my reference, it's close enough. It works, so I'll take it. Okay, now I'll smooth out this edge here. I'll add some more blue in here after. But I just want to get that darker value in there. I will add a bit of black here too. And blend this in. So it's a lot of color mixing. You don't want to have just two different reds. You want to make sure you get a wide range of values and different tones. And by having a few different colors in here, I always say minimum of three or more. So minimum of three. By adding all these different shades, we're starting to get more depth and more realism. And that's how we want to do this. And I'll just lighten it up a little bit here with some pink. Blend it a bit. And I'll lighten it up in here. Maybe add a touch of light blue also for more of a lighter reflection. I'm also seeing just a hint of light green that's being reflected down from the stem, which isn't penciled in yet. I'll just go ahead and add this in for now. It's just a hint of green mixing in there. I'll just adjust my lighter reflections here. Add a bit of black here. And maybe with a touch of red on here, on black. All right, and I'll continue blending this in. And I'll take my pink again and just uh, just a wee bit of color. And this is from the tabletop being reflected back onto the cherry. So we can't ignore those little details if, you, if we want to have a realistic looking piece. I'll add some of these lighter reflections here as well. Maybe with a bit of blue.
if your fingers are all black, <laughs> it might be a little difficult to blend in your blue without making your colors too muddy. So I'll clean off my hands. Take my um, blending stump here. It's got dark pastels on the tip and I'll just use it around the edge just to darken it up a little bit. Okay, before I continue with the stems and with the final highlights on this and the tabletop, I just want to start adding in some white around I want a nice white background on this. Once I've got this outlined, I'll just go in with a pastel stick. It'll be much easier. But around the finer stems, it's a lot simpler to just go in with a pencil. Now I'm going to outline the cherries very carefully. If I was going in with a pastel stick here, it'll be a, it would be a little bit too awkward. There was a time I only worked with pastel sticks and I would have done this with a broken piece of pastel stick. It was very doable, but just it slowed down the process. So pastel pencils are beautiful because they allow you to go into very small spaces. I'm being careful because I don't want to transfer any of that red into my nice white background. Then I end up with a pink background. I'm just going to quickly adjust my shape here. I want a little bit more of an oval shape. And I'll just touch up the black. And I'll take my blending stump, blend this in.
and I'll continue outlining on this side. And my pencil is getting dull again. The pencils get dull really quick when you um, use them for larger areas. Here, I'll take out this stick now. And this is a white Rembrandt stick. I find it really nice and creamy. I love this white. It covers really nicely. I'll just quickly go over the rest of the pastel mat on top here before I work my way down. And the direction doesn't really matter here because I'm going to be pushing and blending and blending in everything together. So. Everything's just going to be white. I want this to be more of a little contemporary still life. Okay, I'm going to be careful here. Let's see, I just went over my cherry. That's okay, I'll adjust that. Accidents happen. I'm laying down all my white and then build my shadows over top of the white, but I need my white in first. And I made little lines here about one inch up from the edge of my pastel mat, just because I'm going to have an edge on the tabletop. And instead of taking the time to measure it out while I'm recording, I just pre-measured it before. I'm just going to bring my line Okay, let's see about fixing this little bit here. The beauty of pastels is they're so forgiving. And a little bit of red, just mix this in. All right.
Okay. I'm going to work on the stem now, or the stems. So this green is number 234. I'm just going to quickly pencil this in. I already added a bit of green here. The other green was number 232. Just adjust my reflection while I'm here. And adjust this reflection here as well. I'll take my pink again and just pop down some of the lighter color. Now the stems get darker on the on the tips, so I'm going to take my black pencil. And so I'll just make a rough little edge here. I made that a little thick. I'll just go over it with some white. See how well the um, Rembrandt covers? I love that. When you can even cover on top of black like that, that's beautiful. I'll take a bit of brown now. This is a Geoconda brown. It's more like a, um, a burnt umber color. And I'll just lightly go around the edge. Just lighten it up. So I usually tend to go from dark to light when I work. You can't always do that. It depends on the sections you're working on sometimes. But most of the time, I will work from dark to light. And I'll keep going lighter and lighter as I work. And I'll just add a bit of green on top of this. Just blend in those colors, just to make it look a little bit more natural, just so it's not just one black line. And just a few bits of green here on top of the brown. I'll just lightly go over 
the bottom here with the black again. My light source is coming in from this way. So the lightest colors will be on this side of the stem and the darker colors on the opposite side. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're working. I'll add a bit of brown here to you. And a bit of brown on this side as well. The painting is at an awkward angle too. So once it's um, mostly done, I'll go back in and adjust my whites after. And I'll flip my painting upside down just so I can get, re get everything worked out a little bit more neatly. Just smooth these lines out with my blending stump. my brown here and just extend some of the stem just so it's not so neat looking and I'll take some lighter green add some bits here and add a bit of this lighter green this is the number 232 just add in a bit of light here and I'll do the same here There. Okay. I love using my stick to layer white shadow, um, white highlights. Did I say white shadows? White highlights. And I'll just add a little pop of light here. And another little pop of light here. I'll take my pink and I'll just lightly work this in here as well as around here and see what a difference just that little white highlight made. I'll smooth out the shapes. Now, if you pay close attention to the reference photo on this part here, there's a little blue reflection because of the table. So I'll just go in and very lightly pencil in that reflection. And that's the white tabletop being reflected in there. I'll just outline that little blue reflection with some pink. And there. Okay, now what I need to do is build in the shadows here. So before I do that, I just want to touch up some of the white. Just clean that up a bit. Because once my shadows are down in this section, I don't want to be coming in here anymore.
and I can work on this for quite a while still, but I won't. I'm just going to do the necessary, but just know that when you're working with realism, you can always keep refining your painting. You just have to get to a point where you say it's done. So as for the cherries themselves, I'll call them done. But I'm going to work on the shadows now. But just know that I would be able to still keep working these, just refining them. I might come in and refine some of the highlights here on top. Just make those a little bit um, brighter. So I'll just add a pop of dark gray here. As well as here. And now I'm going to take a lighter gray. So this darker gray was number 506. Now I'm going to come in with 003. And I'm just going to work in that color around what I just laid down. And I want to slightly go around the, shot, the um, cherry. And just lighten my shadow. I don't want a very dark shadow. And I'll just blend this in. Work it up just a little bit more up on top, on top here. And I'll do the same here. And the shadow comes down just a little bit below here. So with this shadow, like I said, I don't want to start in too dark because otherwise it won't look right. So I'd rather start in lighter and work in my way darker. It's kind of the reverse of what I normally do. Normally I start dark and work my way in build lighter layers. I'm kind of doing the opposite right now. I'm being very careful not to go over the red here. I end up with pink. I'm going to take an even lighter gray just to lighten out the edges without having to use my finger. I'll just rely on color. And I think I'll darken up this part just a little bit more. Not too much, just a bit. Okay, now I will come in on the bottom with some black because the shadow is very dark just on the bottom part. So this kind of ties the cherry to the shadow. There. 
And I'll come in with this lighter gray here just to adjust a little bit around here. Being very careful not to go over the red. I'm going to take my blending stump here. Hopefully I don't make a mess. I always have a paper towel next to me and I wipe off my pencils all the time as well as my blending stump. Okay, now I just want to finish this little edge here. So this is the side edge of the table. So I'm just going to scribble in some dark gray. So this is the fun part, just scribbling in color without being careful. And I'll add in some of the lighter gray. This will be getting lightened up a fair bit. It's going to be almost white, but just a lighter white. And I'll push this in together, blend this in. I'm going to brighten up the edge here before I continue. Okay, now I'll take my pencil, uh, my stick, sorry, and I'll just scribble in some white over top of this. This is kind of giving me that rough painted over look that's on the old painted wood. So I'm kind of leaving some of the rougher lines on there just to give me that painted over look. Layers of paint over the wood grain. Okay, so now this here is a yellow ochre. I just want to warm it up on this bottom part here. So I'm just going to scribble in a bit. And now I'm blending everything together. Now I'm going to really try and reproduce some of that texture that I see on my reference photo. I'm not going to make it identical, but just add some little wavy lines in there just to simulate that texture. And I'm pushing down really hard on my pastel mat right now really blending it in. I want it soft. I don't want hard lines. And all the darker colors that I layered underneath are giving me my little shadows in between the grooves. So I don't necessarily have to go back in and pencil in any shadows. Going to take my white pencil and just carry down some of the white here and there. Not everywhere. This tabletop has a distressed look, so I'm going to just leave some of the brighter 
whites in just some areas, not everywhere. And just adding some white lines just in select areas. I don't want too many of them. And smooth that over. Now I will take my black pencil and I'll just pencil in some black reproducing that distressed look that this tabletop has. So I'm going to carry down some of the black marks. You don't want just a perfect black line. It's going to uh, not look like distressed furniture after. And like I said, it doesn't have to be identical. Just, just so long as it looks like distressed furniture. There. And I'll just go over some areas with the white again. I'll adjust this here. I think I'll take my white pencil for this, just so I can get in more closely. All right. And just make a few adjustments. And that's it. Now I can sign my name. And I'll just now add a few flecks of black here and there. Not too many. If I put too many, it'll be overkill and it's not going to look right. So just in a few random places. I just gently push down. So I'll call this done. Like I said, though, I could work this a lot more, but I'll leave it at that. And when I sign my paintings and pastels, now I like to use colored pencil instead of a pastel pencil because I can get a sharper point and I just find it so much easier to sign with a colored pencil than it is with a pastel pencil. So I'll just go ahead and sign my name in now. And voila, there we have it, two cherries. And now here's that little pro tip. 
When I set up my still life paintings, sometimes I want my subjects to remain in a certain position. This cherry here just falls when I try and make it stand a certain way. What I do with smaller items like the cherries is I take double sided tape, cut off a tiny piece, stick it to the bottom of the cherry, and then I'm able to set it up the way I want to, just like I did with the two cherries in this reference. They kept falling, so by adding the double sided tape, I was able to position them exactly how I wanted. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please be sure to give this a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you get notifications when I come out with new tutorials or other videos. And also, if you want longer tutorials, please check out my Patreon where I offer longer videos in both oils and pastels. And now if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy these two right here. Take care guys.